Hi everyone, sorry we are a little bit late this morning. I don't know if you've noticed, but the light is changing drastically at the moment. We're working with natural light here in the studio today and we've got a few clouds in the sky here in Brisbane today, so it's going to be a little fun. If I get very bright, very <laughs> overexposed, I apologise. If I go very dark, I also apologise, but Garrett is on the other side of that that screen and he is going to uh, keep an eye on it. So yeah, thanks for joining me. This is my session workflow um, conversation that I want to have with you. I just released my one wrap workflow and I want to talk to you about how to create the perfect session workflow for you because I know that there's a lot of photographers that start out photographing babies that get very excited, they go into a session and they might be able to get through one setup and then all of a sudden they're like, what do I do next? Where do I go to next? How do I streamline my workflow to make it efficient, to, to create a gallery full of variety and to also create photographs that your clients love? I know that they're some of the biggest questions and unknowns when it comes to photographing babies. So that's why I wanted to share this live with you. Someone did ask if I was going to teach wrapping during this. Here, here comes the sun again. <laughs> um, no, this is not about wrapping. This is about session workflow. And it is about my one wrap workflow as well because the reason I created this particular workflow was I noticed that I was getting and, and a lot of photographers that photograph babies get them. Um, I was getting more awake babies, I was getting unsettled babies, and whilst I had my go-to workflow, I would still sort of go, right, what am I doing wrong here? Why can't I seem to get this workflow right? But it all comes down to understanding babies and realizing that not every baby is the same. And you have to have different workflows for different scenarios, because when your clients come into the studio, they are paying you for a product and a service. They don't care. At the end of the day, regardless of whether their baby is doing that or doing this, they're coming to you because they want photographs. So you as the photographer have to know how to capture the photographs that they are paying you for. So that's why having a session workflow is so important to how you produce and how you um, uh, deliver what they're paying for, essentially. So. As you can see, I've got quite a few different setups around me here. And this is, um, you know, this is something that never used to be a part of my session workflow. I'm all about experience when my clients come into the studio. I'm all about communicating with them, having that conversation, engaging with them, and trying to find out as much as I possibly can from them so that I can create the photographs that they want. I love that conversation with them. But I also know that there are some clients that just want to get in and get out. We've got to understand that parents of newborn babies, and especially if they've got other children as well, they're going to be extremely sleep deprived. They're going to be um, overwhelmed. They're going to be filled with love and excitement, but also a lot of the unknown, not knowing, you know, is their baby getting enough food? Is their baby sleeping right? Um, they, they, you know, they're so worried that anything could go wrong at any moment that they, you know, tend to kind of be on edge a little bit. So we've got to understand that when they come into our studios or even when we're going to their homes so that we've got a game plan in place, we're prepared and we know what we're going to do next. All right, so thank you guys so much for joining me. I can see that there's someone from, the, from Philadelphia, fantastic. I hope you're doing well over there. Um, if you are watching, tune in, let me know where you are from. I love to see where you all are. It's fantastic. We've got 124 people watching Holy so far. Holy smokes. Well, we're only you. just getting started. <laughs> so yeah, I just did a lot of verbal um, <laughs> output there. And I'm going to go through a few of these sort of things. But what I want to start with is knowing what your clients want. Now, it's very hard to know what your clients want when you don't ask them. We might assume, and it's something that I used to assume a long time ago, that just because they're booking us and they're booking us from our websites and they're, you know, or our um, social media pages, we, we sometimes assume that they just want what they see. But there are different reasons why a client will hire you. They, a lot of clients will hire you because they do love your work, they love your style. Um, some clients will hire you because they've heard you're the best at what you do in your area. 
and other clients will hire you because, yeah, you're just convenient and you're within their price range. So you've got to remember that there are many variables to why someone will hire you. But what they want um, is, is going to be somewhat different. Some clients come in and they're like, yeah, go for it, do whatever. Other clients are going to be a little more specific with what they request. Some clients will send you a million photos, some clients will turn up and they'll show you a million photos. And some, not always your photos. <laughs> we all know what that feels like when a client sits there and they start uh, scrolling through their, their photo um, gallery and none of the screenshots are from your Instagram, Facebook or website. And it can be a little deflating. But what we need to remember is we are providing that product and service, so you've got to ask the right questions when they do that. You know, and, and you might not have the same props, you might not have you all be able to do the same pose, things like that. You've got to know what to come back with. So my go-to questions when I get shown a photograph that's not mine is, what is it that you love the most about that photograph? Is it the colour, the pose or the prop? And then that way you can get some feedback fr back from them and, and start to create photos that they love. Because I can tell you now, if you don't deliver a gallery that your clients love, it's going to reflect on your sales. No one's going to buy a photograph they don't love. If you didn't listen, if you didn't communicate, if you didn't ask the right questions, you're not going to know what to create for them. So as we evolve as photographers and we always change, I've been doing this for 17 years now, and I am always constantly reassessing what works, what doesn't work within my sessions. And that's that process of evolution. How I you know, learn to streamline everything I do based off past experiences because you don't know what you don't know and you can't buy experience. So we've got to take on what happens within a session and then as we start to grow and evolve, use those experiences you know, to continually improve and be the best photographer you can be that day for your client. And I can't emphasize that enough. All right, so when they are showing you photographs and they might not necessarily be yours, if it's the prop that they love, you can say, well, I don't necessarily have that exact same prop, but I do have something that's similar. And you can show them. If it's the, um, the styling, you know, I've got similar items, similar textures and colors that I can use to create something, you know, very similar to this for you. Now, we've got to remember, we don't want to copy, but we do want to get the information that we need from our clients so that we can create something that's still unique to us, but you just need their input and that is um, something that we do forget to ask all the time. We can get caught up in the ego of you know, being a creative and a photographer and what we love to do, but I can guarantee you, when you are servicing your clients and providing that exceptional customer service, you are communicating, you're connecting, you then will be able to deliver what they want from you. And it will, again, like I said, reflect always in your sales. All right, so going back to um, all of my different setups that I've got here, this is a new process to me. Uh, when my clients come into the studio, I always inform them of how my sessions are going to pan out. And that is giving them information about what to expect. So we prepare, we prepare them prior to the session with information about what to expect in terms of where the session's held, how long it goes for, what they need to bring, um, all of those different things. But when they get here, you know, they can be very overwhelmed by the space. It's exciting for them. We've got to remember that. They don't want to miss a minute of anything that's happening. Um, and they just want to see everything that's going on. So they can be a little anxious as well with not knowing how, how the session's going to flow. So my go-to at the beginning of every session is, I'm going to start with your baby on my posing bag. I'm going to go through a series of three to four poses. I'm then going to move on to a couple of different props, and then I'm going to photograph you with your baby. So that's pretty much my go-to. Now that will slightly change if they have siblings. So you throw in a couple of kids into the mix, you, you kind of want to get them pretty early on in the session. I used to actually photograph them first. So I would get those toddlers in here, and then what I realized was, I would waste so much time at the beginning of a shoot trying to get those toddlers in the photographs that I was just wasting time. So what I, what I found worked the best was 
I started with the baby. I would go through one to two setups up here on my posing bag and then I would move on to getting my sibling shots. Now the reason I did this was I noticed and obviously I've got children of my own and I remember what they were like at the different ages that kids come in at and kids just want attention. So when you don't give them attention, they want your attention more. So when I pay my full attention to the newborn, they want to know what I'm doing. They want to be a part of it. So I always start with photographing the newborn first and then I move on to the sibling setup and that's how I've kind of evolved this workflow of mine. So I still start on my posing bag because it's where I can get lots of really beautiful, classic, simple, timeless photos and then I'll move on to something with those siblings. And again, you never know how they're going to react. So if they, they don't want to be a part of the session, that's when I will say, do you know what, let's come back to that and I'll just let them go and I can move on to something else. So when I then have a couple that come in and they say, no, I don't want to be in the photographs, just make it about the baby that's when you're going to have to come up with more setups to fill that client gallery depending on the amount of images that you supply to your client. I give my clients 20 images. That's personal preference. How many you deliver is entirely up to you. But just remember, when you promise more, you need to shoot more and you need to edit more. So that's going to be more time. And your time is valuable. Your time is worth money to you. So always remember and go off past experiences like I was saying before. Um, learn from you know the different types of packages that people have purchased over the years from you how many images are they purchasing from you learn from that and start to evolve your packages as well and what you are selling to your your clients all right so now what I like to do prior to my shoot is communicate with my clients about the colors tones and textures that we're going to use throughout the session I do this because when they come into the studio, um, obviously there's a lot of things in here that they get excited about. They love looking at all the textures, all the materials, the fabrics, the blankets. It's really like walking into a homeware store. They get very excited about it. But I have that much content now online in terms of my Instagram, my Facebook and my website that I can say to my clients, you know, over a conversation, and I do like to do this on the phone so I can introduce myself, get to know them a little bit. You know, what is it that really caught your eye about my photography? What is it that you loved the most? I tend to use a lot of neutral, um, sort of natural earthy tones and textures. So 80% of the time, that's what my clients respond with. They love those tones. But I do always ask them to send me five to 10 screenshots from my Instagram, from my Facebook, from my website of photographs that they love. The style, I tell them what to look for as well. I tell them to look at the different types of poses that they like. I tell them to look at the different types of colors and tones and then the props. So that way I'm starting to get a really good understanding of what it is that they like. Um, I also pay a particular attention to all the little details in the photos that they send me. If they're sending me photos where the babies are constantly holding little things like this, I'm going to include those. But if they send me photos where then the baby is not holding anything, there's no bonnets, I'm going to start to identify that they love a more sort of simplistic um, um, style. They're not sort of into all of the, the little accessories. So you have to be very aware and pay particular attention to the type of photographs that they are sending you. So we'll do this over the course of two weeks. What I've found from doing this is that my clients get even more excited about turning up for the session and I guarantee that they turn up for the session. I, in the past, I've heard a lot of photographers say, my client was a no-show. Well, unfortunately, you didn't communicate with them leading up to the shoot to get them in the door. So this is that process of getting to know them. It's a service you're providing them. You're not annoying them. You're just getting the information that you need so you can get them in and out as quickly as possible and deliver the photos that they want from you, that they're going to pay you for. That's what we've got to remember. So 
when you're communicating with them about that, let them know, you know, hi, I'd love to organize a phone call with you so that I can get a good idea of the different types of photographs that you'd like to create throughout your sessions. This, this is going to allow me to make sure that our session's gonna go nice and quick for you and, you know, I can get you in and out as quickly as possible because I know you must be a little sleep deprived right now and no one wants to sit in a studio for blah, blah, blah. How you word that has got to obviously reflect, reflect your personality and the way that you want to communicate with your clients as well. Okay, I am talking a lot. If you've got any questions, pop them into the comments, guys. There was a question here. Let me just roll back. Uh, Cassie Stubbs. Hi, Kelly Brown. Hi. Do you just offer one package, 20 images? No, I have four packages. I've always um, offered four packages because some of my clients want wall art, some of my clients want albums and some of my clients just want beautiful you know sort of small prints that they can box up and interchange with their own frames and things like that so my my packages have evolved over a period of time but what's really important for me is delivering printed product um, there's so much more value in a beautifully crafted printed product so make sure that you are always you know going back over your previous packages and your previous previous experiences with clients to see you know any buying trends or things like that you will always have a more popular product but you know what in saying that that's me so if you feel comfortable just offering one package go for it but there are different clients out there and we need to be able to have something for every client so that's why I have just that little bit of variety as well Alrighty, so going back to this whole communication process, yes, we're here to talk about session workflow, but the communication process is what's gonna help you at the time of your session, be able to streamline your processes and prepare you for, you know, for whatever's going to happen throughout a shoot. My one wrap workflow was designed because I was getting some older babies and now that we are coming out of you know, a pandemic, where we've been in lockdown, there will be, you know, a lot of families out there that are still going to want photographs of their babies and they may just be a little bit older. Uh, you're going to have unsettled babies, not all the time. Sometimes babies come in and they're ready to rock and roll and they're easy, but there are other babies that might be a little more sensitive to touch, that might just need that little bit of extra time to settle. And you've got to be able to pick up on that. So the first thing I do when I take a baby from my clients is I'll hold them in my hands here. And as I'm talking to my clients about, you know, what we're doing and things like that, I'll just place my hands on the back of their hands, on the back of their um, arms, on their hands, and I'll rub their head and I will see how they respond to my touch. Because some babies, you know, um, will be quite sort of responsive and reactive to touch and they'll be fidgety. Some, are, some babies will also just love it. They love to be touched. We're all different and we've got to remember that babies are exactly the same as us. We all like and prefer different things. And, and if they are a little bit more responsive to touch, if they are a little grizzly, if they are awake, I'm going to wrap them. That's my go-to. The only time I will not wrap them um, is when they are completely zonked in my arms and not moving, not flinching, not responding, and they're very relaxed. And that's when I'll go into my more sort of naked setups on my posing bag. Um, Maria's actually got a question about that whole... Um, she can never keep a baby asleep. What's the secret? And I think this is part of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so this is it. Um, this is how you create a session workflow based on the baby so that you can make them comfortable, can make them nice and content so they do go off into a nice sleep. If you've got a baby that's grizzly and they've just been fed, um, they are going to probably either have a little bit of wind or a belly pain. So this is where it's going to be um, nice for you to keep them, you know, wrapped up nice and secure and keep them somewhat elevated. So laying flat like this after a full feed, I'm going to ask you, if you've got a full tummy, if you've just had the biggest meal, I'm talking Christmas dinner, big meal, and you go and lay down, sometimes that doesn't feel very comfortable. So you've got to remember, when they've got a full tummy, sometimes laying fat, flat doesn't feel very comfortable, especially if they've got wind. So this is where keeping them elevated and sort of keeping their, their sort of chest and airway um, area a little bit more open so that they're not sort of scrunched down like that 
and, and that's keeping that air in. Keeping them sort of a bit more upright is going to allow them to bring up any wind that they do have. So this is where if I've got that baby that is a little bit older, a little bit unsettled, a little bit awake, um, whatever reason, sensitive to touch, I'm going to wrap them. And you can see how I've got my little fake baby here wrapped. And this is what I like to sort of call my potato sack wrap. It's um, you know where you wrap them with their little legs curled up and their little hands up underneath their chin. I find this a very versatile way to wrap them. Um, you can start with their little hands down and then eventually bring them back up. If, if they're you know nuzzling on their hands and you want to put them down, that's fine. But what I like to do with this particular style is start with them on my posing bag because it is really simple. And it's not a complicated setup that's going to take a little bit more time to style. When I start up here, this is going to still give me that idea of what I'm going to expect with this little baby because I'm, I'm getting to know them. And like I keep saying, every baby's different. You've got to get to know them to be able to photograph them. Um, so I'll pop them up here in my posing bag. I'll start with a support up here so that I can put their, their head upright, elevated, and she's on an incline of about that right now on my posing bag. So her head is here and her bottom's here, so she's nice and elevated there. And then I'll get some close-up photos of her face. I'll get some pullback photos. Um, I can even, at this point, bring in some fabric, place that over the top, put a bonnet on. I can get a little bit of variety. So this is where we start to, to sort of think about um, how we're going to start our sessions and how we're going to fill them with photographs that don't look the same. And that session workflow is going to be really important to you in this sense of creating a variety of images because when you show a customer a gallery filled with, say, let's, let's go with 30 to 50 images and five images look really similar, that's going to confuse your client. They're not going to know which image to pick. I want to personally create a gallery filled with images that I know they're going to want to purchase every photograph. From experience, I know that 20 images is doable. I know they can purchase 20 images. 50 images seems like a lot, and especially if a lot of the photos look the same. So I shoot for 20, and I provide 20 for my clients, and that's what gives me the variety. So that's 20 for them to choose from. That's it? That is it. But my packages, like I said, I sell four packages. Three of those packages come with 20 images. One package comes with 10, and I can tell you, I never sell it, because they always want the 20, and that's, that's a different class. <laughs> All right, so let's grab our baby back here. Anyway, so let's go back to the setup and that pre-plan before the session and then we'll talk about what we're going to do with each of these setups so that I don't keep you all day. Talking about pre-planning, how do you recommend your clients come in? Um, do you recommend them to feed the baby first or what's kind of your, your recommendation let's, there? Yeah, yeah, let's include that into, this, um, into what I'm about to talk about now. Okay, so your client has booked you. You send them back a beautiful email and you say, thank you so much for booking me. I'm so excited to photograph your baby, whenever that might be, in terms of the date and their, their due date and things like that. Um, then you give them a little bit more information about you know, um, what to expect leading up to this. If their baby's due next week, then you know, that communication process is going to be pretty solid leading up to the session. But if they're not due for another three months, then you don't start planning what you're going to do in that shoot now because in another three months they may have been inspired by other photographs that you've created. So you really want to leave that to a couple of weeks before the session, before their due date that you really want to start talking about this pre-planning part. What I like to do is tell my clients to start banking ideas, start looking, use this time now. So this is anywhere from, you know, one month to, to three months away that they're booking in, I like to tell them to start looking and, and finding ideas and ways that they would like to have their baby photographed. Start creating a little gallery of screenshots that they can share with me closer to their due date so that we can create a gallery full of photographs that they love. That's the sort of words and terminology that I use when I am communicating with them. I also let them know that once they've had their baby and they are home from hospital, 
to let me know so we can get them booked in. That, um, that's really important. And then if you haven't heard from them, and I'm hoping that you're using some form of system to give you alerts and notifications that somebody's due date is coming, um, you can then reach out to them if you haven't heard from them. If their due date has come and gone, you need to be the person that reaches out to them. Hi, I just wanted to touch base, see how you're all, you know, see how you're going. Uh, this, you, you know, I can't, I can't, uh, what was I going to say then? <laughs> um, you know, you must be so excited, blah, blah, blah. They're all the things that I would put into that email. But this is obviously your job to communicate with them and reach out to them. Um, just before their due date is when I will contact them and I will say, I'd love to organise a phone call when you're available to talk about what we're going to create during your session and if there's anything special that you would like to bring with you to incorporate. And this is where I will talk to them about that little special item might be a fairly family heirloom, not something that they found on Etsy that resembles uh, an animal of some description. So obviously it's more about creating photographs that matter and uh, not just taking photographs for the sake of it with my clients and that's how I, I like to treat my sessions. Um, so once we all have that phone call, I'll also ask them to send me a couple of photographs, you know, of the, their living area, their main living area in their home because I sell wall art and when I create a piece of um, art to go on their wall, I want it to go with their decor. So if somebody's got a really bright, white, airy home, I'm not going to create something that's really dark and moody because it's just going to stand out on their wall and not go with their, their overall style. So I want to get a really good sense of you know, the colours and the tones and the textures that they love. Um, because you know that when you create photographs that, that go with all of that, then they're not going to come down off the wall, they're not going to date. You want to create timeless photographs that will stay on the wall so that every time they walk past that photo of their baby, they are reminded, you know, of how long ago that was. Oh, we might actually need to update those family photographs um, and so on. So when we have that conversation, they, they send me some photographs. I ask them, what particular colours and tones do you love? Do you have any... Um, colours in the baby's nursery or, you know, throughout your home that you would like to incorporate into your session? Do you have any particular preference? Um, sometimes you will have people that will send you screenshots of the most elaborate setups. And I can tell you that's going to be a big saviour in time because you'll be able to create a lot of the, you know, the fiddly sort of bits beforehand um, prior to the shoot. And if you use digital backgrounds, you can send them. Um, a, a gallery of the digitals that you use so that when they come in you know what to shoot for and, and so forth. So you're always constantly pre-planning. So having a look around here, let's just say for example that our beautiful baby's parents, they loved all my neutral, natural sort of earthy tones and they basically said to me, we love browns, I'd love to incorporate a bit of this, a bit of that. So what I've gone and done is picked out all of my beautiful warm brown tones and I've brought them down to here based off let's just say the photos that they sent me. They sent me a photo of a little bed, they sent me a photo of a prop like a, a bowl and, and so forth. So I get all of the different tones and the textures together so that I've got them ready to go. Now when they arrive in the studio everything's set up so I can worry more about the comfort and the safety of the baby instead of fussing over how I'm going to style and what I'm going to use. So let's just say for example now I've got everything ready to go. In the back of my mind I know what I'm going to do with each piece and I know what I'm going to do in my posing bag but the order that I do them in may change depending on the baby. So we've got our baby and let's just say for example they sent me photographs of a baby that wasn't wrapped and they've sent me, you know, beautiful unwrapped, you know, half naked sort of baby poses up here in the posing bag. But they get here and their baby is unsettled and it's sensitive to touch and it's squirming. This is when I need to have that conversation with them. Because I can still use all of these different pieces with an unwrapped baby, but I can still use them with a wrapped baby. 
So I'm pre-planning and I'm organising for a session workflow with a settled, content, happy baby that doesn't necessarily need to be wrapped, but I'm also prepared just in case that baby is, um, you know, filled with colic, wind, um, is just really fidgety, is overtired, you name it, all of the different things. But you have to get those photographs because you don't have time to stand there rocking that baby and putting it off to sleep because I can tell you now, no parents want to sit in your studio for four plus hours when it is hot and they are tired. They just want their baby back. Did you notice that light change again? Yeah. So for all you people out there that think that natural light's easy to photograph with, no. <laughs> it is a good challenge, that's for sure. All right, so let's just say I've got that baby, it's been fed and it is grizzling, it is squirming, and we need to have that conversation. Okay, so what I'm noticing here is, um, you know, they're, they're not overly fond of me touching them. So to get started with the session, what I'm going to do is use some of my beautiful soft wraps and I'm just gonna wrap them up and see how they go. If they go off into a nice, beautiful, deep sleep, then I might be able to unwrap them and get some of those beautiful curly shots up here on the posing bag. But I'm gonna go off your baby and I'm gonna read their cues because all, all of them, always, tell me what to do. Um, okay, has your baby got a nappy underneath your wrapping? This is, I, I leave the nappy on all the time now. The only time I ever take the nappy off, or diaper, off a baby is when I'm doing the bum up pose and they're not wearing a little outfit. So my go-to now whenever I wrap is to have the nappy on because it's gonna save you a lot of accidents. I also get them at the beginning of the session if they've been fed, um, they're, they're wide awake and all of that kind of stuff. Oh, we we're going to talk about feeding. I'll come back to that. Um, and I, I will also get them to change the nappy as well. So I tell them, you know, let's start with a nice full tummy and I might just get you to check their nappy. So that way, because I leave it on, that way they're not sitting in a dirty nappy for, you know, for the duration of the session. And they do that. So they need your guidance. You need to tell them what to do. Prior to the session, um, when we are communicating and we are planning um, and then I'm giving them information about what to expect, I never tell my clients to feed their baby before they get here. That is, um, you know, that's probably one of the hardest things for a mum when they have a new baby is that knowing have they fed their baby enough? Is their baby, why is their baby constantly hungry? It's one of those challenges and when you feel like you've got that feeding routine in place, it goes and changes all over again. Um, and breastfeeding does come more naturally to some mums than it does to others. I'm not here to judge, um, I'm just here to photograph a baby. So I always get them to just turn up at the shoot and then I say to them, when was your baby last fed? If they say that that baby was fed half an hour ago and it's nice and sleepy, I'll say, do you know what, let's start and if at any point in time your baby sort of wakes up, um, you know, or starts looking for food, I'm going to give them back, to, you know, for a quick top up or, or a cuddle or whatever it is, and then we can move on from there. But when they tell me that their baby was fed half an hour ago, I know that if it's a breastfed baby, I'm going to get around an hour to an hour and a half between feeds of me posing them. If it's a formula fed baby, then I know that I'm gonna get two to you know three hours, depending on the baby. Some babies are more hungry than others, between feeds. Um, so that way, if you are you know, 70 minutes in and that baby's going like this, instead of continually trying to settle that baby and get the shot or force them into the next setup, give that baby back, because you're wasting time. You're wasting time trying to get them to settle again. Give that baby back for a quick feed and then you can move on. Because the more that they nuzzle, the more that they stir, the more that you try to settle them when they're hungry, the more you're gonna overstimulate them which will impact um, how your session pans out. Understanding babies um, and their behavior is, is so important for us as newborn photographers. I've written a blog post about it. Um, hopefully, I don't know if Michelle's on, um, joining us but she's often posting links and things like that but if not go to my newbornposing.com blog and type in newborn behavior and read articles on the internet about it um, and understand feeding patterns and things like that 
but I don't want to put any more pressure on new parents than what's already on them. I just want to get an understanding of where they're at. If that baby um, fed 30 to you know, 60 minutes ago, or if they come in for a 10 o'clock session and their baby was fed at 8.30, 8 o'clock, I'm gonna go, let's undress your baby, leave the nappy on, and, um, and let's get them fed so they've got a nice full tummy before we start. That's how I communicate with them prior to the session. So there is no, um, no information that I send out that says you must feed your baby or you must not do this or you must have a, a pacifier or you must do this. I don't do any of that. I'm here to photograph a baby. I need to understand them I need to under as in parents and I under need to understand the baby so that I can do my job. It's all about doing the research and learning as much as you possibly can about your subject. Okay. So let's just say we've got our posing bag set up and I've already expressed to my clients, you know, I'm gonna start with your baby wrapped because they're just a little bit more sensitive to my touch. Might take them a little bit longer just to kind of, you know, sink into that nice deep sleep. This is where I will start on my posing bag. So like I said, I'm gonna photograph them on their back and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna get some close up shots you can turn the little face, you can get some backlit shots, you can get some eyelash shots, some detail shots, all of those um, little close-up details are going to be absolutely loved by your clients. Uh, like I said, you can use bits of fabric to, to create different looks. Um, I've got different wraps up here. This is where, you know, you might want to create a completely different look. And you might use something like this, which is just a little knit You might sort of just bring it around the front here and tuck that in just to sort of give you, um, you know, something that's a bit different. But the beautiful thing about this type of wrapping is that with all of my different setups, I've got wraps in here. So this is where I can get creative with the, the, the way that I wrap them on the outside, add little bows, um, crisscross it, add different colours, things like that, drape the fabric differently with each setup. And you'll see that in the gallery of photo, photos from my one wrap workflow. Add different hats and things like that to bring out different textures. Little blankets like this, you can still do the side pose with a baby that's wrapped like this. You may just be able to change the position of their hands. So instead of having their hands up like this, you may bring the hand up around the cheek, bring both hands up by the cheek for the different setups. So when you are wrapping a baby like this, it's really important that you obviously haven't wrapped them too tight. You should always be able to put your fingers in here and pull on that wrap so that there is that little bit of movement. When they're in the womb, in those last few weeks, it is, it's a very tight space. You know, poor mum's stomach is, is out there. She can feel every movement. They're somewhat wrapped in there. They're so confined, but they can still move. And that's how a wrap should feel to them. When you wrap them so tight that they can't move, they will become frustrated and angry. Um, but it can also be um, a safety hazard as well. You can restrict oxygen um, by putting pressure on their, their chest. In Garrett's telling me that there's something there. He's got that's his hand right. up. <laughs> um, on wrapping and you know the whole safety part of it and that sort of thing, uh, Nicole asks, what age would you stop wrapping a baby? Oh, that's a good question because, do you know, we always say, oh, wrap older babies. But the thing is, older babies, as they grow, um, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm going with babies around that sort of six week, six to eight week mark. You can wrap them, but you don't want to wrap them for too long because they've been out of the womb for six to eight weeks. They're now, you know, moving and exploring their limbs. They still don't have control over them, but they are moving. So when a baby is born, um, the way that it comes through the birth canal, they have more than 300 bones in their little bodies. A lot of their bones are soft cartilage tissue and things like that. So they're still growing, they're still developing. But to be able to come through that birth canal, 
that's why you know we've got to be so careful with a newborn baby in those first couple of weeks because their little bodies are still developing and still growing obviously they grow right up until you know they're adults but in terms of you know the strength of their ligaments their muscles and their bones in those first few weeks they change and they they grow so fast in the first three weeks so when I'm sort of looking at a baby that is that little bit older you know sometimes having their arms and legs out sometimes having you know little outfits and rompers that you can put them in is going to be it's going to keep them a lot happier because they have had that time outside the womb you know their bones are nice and strong now their muscles are forming they're becoming more aware of their surroundings and um, having longer awake periods so if you're going to wrap a baby really tight like this that is that little bit older you know i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend doing it for long periods of time newborn babies are they, when they're born, they come out, they've been in this position and that confined for long periods of time. Well, obviously, leading their whole entire gestation. But after they come out, they, they are starting to, you know, move and stretch and, and develop at such a fast rate. So I would be, if I'm photographing an older baby anywhere around that eight week mark, I'd be more you know, inclined to get beautiful smiley expressions and things like that when they start to really focus and can see and, 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 and look at you. Whereas a newborn, obviously they can't. So that's why it's really important to understand the baby's development every single month right up until their one year of age so that when you're photographing, you know what they're capable of. So yeah. Nice. Alrighty. So let's go, if you were to do the side pose with a wrapped baby, then, you know, adding a little pillow in here, adding a little blanket, you're going to get a nice, um, you're going to get a nice sort of above close up shot of their little face. You can take that off, you can add a hat, you can get a full pullback shot. So already, you know, I've probably got from photographing them on their back to down here on their side, I've already got five of my 20 images that I need for my client gallery. And it's all about creating that bank of images that you know that you're going to need. Um, and then obviously using different pieces like that. If that baby is off and out like a light in a deep sleep, but they really want those sort of more naked shots, that's when you could start to unwrap them and peel back the layers. But if you find every time you move that baby that they're still really fidgety, they're still fussy, that's when you probably need to keep them wrapped and move on. So from here, if I've got a sibling, that's when I'll go over to my other little sort of setup that I've got over here to, to get a nice sibling shot. I've got my posing bag set up. I've got another wrap and a little, um, little hat. This particular setup here, if I'm going to keep the baby wrapped the entire time, there are two of these wraps on here. I'm going to keep both of those wraps on there so the baby is nice and secure. This is one of those wraps. So you can see I am 181 centimetres tall. So this wrap is about a metre and a half in length. So my wraps are anywhere from one and a half metres to two metres long in length. So I use two of those to create my nice supportive base layers. And then I start to use other layers like this to create those more sort of decorative outer, outer wraps. So this is where I would use this wrap I would come around, we'll do this real quick. And if I'm photographing a toddler, I'll get them to come and lay down. Always want to have their upper body elevated, so pushing that posing bag down. So I'll put the, the toddler furthest away from my light source and then place the baby down in their hands. I'm going to get a shot of the baby of the toddler or the, or the small child, um, you know, hugging, kissing. Um, and then looking at the camera for one of those cheeky little smiles. Again, sometimes those toddlers want to participate and sometimes they don't. I just experienced one recently. <laughs> and if you've watched my one wrap workflow, there's a little sort of bloopers section at the end um, where we can uh, definitely see that she did not want to participate. It's funny, it's bloopers, but I it's think real. It's actually, people will get a lot out of it because it is so real. Yeah. So after I have photographed the sibling on there with the baby, that's when I would come into, oopsie, 
um, you know, my potato sack set up and get a couple more sort of shots there with the baby. So right now, I think we're probably at about nine photos for our gallery. Just in my head, I'm kind of visualizing all the different camera angles, getting backlit shots, getting, you know, above shots, always looking for the different variety. And then I've got a little bed down here and I've got a bowl. So I could pretty much go one to the other. Um, depending on the baby. This one here is a really nice, easy setup. I've got another little hat and a wrap here. So if I wanted to come in, many ways that you can wrap them. Always have the baby's head elevated, you know, and using the end of the wrap there to create a little bit of detail. Tuck it in there if you need to. Um, a hat, you can put little, little teddy bears in their fingers over here. That's always really cute. Her fingers aren't the best at grabbing things. Um, silicon. And then obviously putting a little hat on. I've got a little bit of a feature there with some natural sort of um, Australian fauna. Um, it's what we call, uh, I think, a little kangaroo paw. And I just love those earthy tones that all tend to go with that. So with this particular setup, I definitely get a shot from above. I would then change. So I'd get a shot from above of adding in all sort of different things like this. I would then take the hat off and I would come in and get a beautiful close up and maybe adjust the position of the hands. I would then adjust the baby's face, turning it away from the light and possibly bring in the fabric and, and do it something a little different over this way. And then I'd get a beautiful backlit shot. So another three images. I'm now at 12. 12 photos for my client gallery. How quick is that? And then over here with my little bowl, I can leave the baby there if, if you need to get it set up, but it's already set up. So we can take her out. All right, and then coming over here, I'll come and sit down on the floor so it's a bit easier. All right, so I've got another different type of wrap. This is where you can get a little bit more creative. I've got a little heart in these particular colors. And this is where you can do some little ties and things like that. But. You can have lots of fun wrapping babies and creating many, many different details, which I am working on, how to create that variety. Um, Carrie asks, do you always do two prop setups? Um, two to three, and it depends on what my clients have sent me. So if your clients are sending you lots of prop photos, then you're going to be more inclined to create more prop setups. But just keep in mind that they do take a lot more time than you know going through a couple of different poses up here from your back to your side. So yeah, always pay attention to what it is that they're sending you and create your workflow for that particular client based off what they want. Now I'm just doing this very roughly and quickly. But if we come up here, All right, so in here, again, when we're using props like this, when that light is falling across the prop, putting the baby deep down inside so the prop basically covers the face is not going to do you any favours when it comes to lighting that face. So we always want to make sure that the baby's upper body is more elevated and comes up and out of the prop so that the light can fall beautifully across there. This is where having some little towels and supports in the back are very handy to be able to position, to give you the right support that you need. So different background, different fur, different prop. Um, you know, you can use little love hearts and things like that, different hats. Have a look when you are using things like this at how you can use the different light and how you can use the shape of the prop within your frame to create different compositions. Use the the lines of the prop 
um, with the way that you wrap the baby and it'll all create such beautiful leading lines into the face. This baby's face is the main important part of the photograph. So all of the different elements that you use when you're styling should lead to that and they shouldn't um, distract or overpower the main subject. So whenever you're adding different elements and things like that, always remember, are they adding or distracting? Are they complementing um, or taking away? Okay, so for here, you know, I would get a full pullback shot again. I would try something different with the little hands. Um, I love how, you know, you can capture really beautiful moody black and white shots with really simple setups like this. So hat on, hat off. I'm going to get another three shots from there. Where are we up to? We're up to 15 shots now. Okay, then we've still got our bucket and then we've got parent shots. So by now, if the baby is not asleep and it's still fussing, still fidgety, I would keep them wrapped. I can still use my bucket and put them in there. Um, or if they're nice and sleepy, this is going to be um, a really important thing to remember when you are wrapping a baby like this, is the temperature. You know, right now, if this was a real baby, I would have the temperature in the studio around 24 degrees Celsius. You'll have to go to um, a Google converter to work out what that is in Fahrenheit. But around 24, 25 degrees Celsius, because when they're wrapped up like this, they can overheat if it's too hot in the studio. So if I'm planning to unwrap the baby to get some more sort of nudie type shots, um, I'm going to have some heaters around the area and I'll start to warm that area up before I plan to take their, their wrap off so that I'm not taking them from that beautiful, warm, secure place and into a cold, unsecure place because they will react and respond to that. So what I love about a prop like this and leaving my upright in a prop to last is that if I'm going to take some beautiful parent shots afterwards and I know that I'm going to get, um, and let's just say there's no sibling, um, I know that I'm going to get around five to sort of six different images for my client gallery of family shots, mum alone, dad alone, then both of them together. And if we're already at 15, this is just an added bonus. So you can either choose to go to there depending on how many different angles and shots that you've already captured. That's entirely up to you. But I, my clients see every photograph that I capture. Um, so let's just say, for example, you know, we've got um, a, a clients who don't want to be in the photographs and we know we've got to get more, so we need to get that variety. You could place them in here with the bucket, pull the stuffing out, place them in there and get that type of shot and get a different angle. And then what you could do if they're still nice and sleepy, but remember when you're using buckets, pulling them in and out, they're going to respond to that. Trying to get you know, your hand down in the bucket underneath their bottom to pull them out, that's moving them, that's handling them. And the whole point of this is trying not to overhandle them too much and move them too much. All right, so let's just say, for example, we've got a beautiful, calm, sleeping baby. And you don't necessarily want to get all of the, the photos with the parents wrapped. Um, so if you were to unwrap a baby for a setup like this, you don't have to unwrap them completely. The beautiful thing is you can just peel back these layers because, again, they're not too tight. You can peel them back. and pull out their little elbows. So now if I'm going to do upright and a prop, <laughs> looks a bit funny. Um, if I'm going to do upright and a prop, I know that their bottom half is going to be nice and comfortable and secure and they're not going to be able to move inside that prop. I can bring their little hands up into that position and I can place them inside my bucket over here that's already set up with all the supports and I can use a hat to get a pullback shot, I can get a close-up shot, I can take the hat off, I can get down really low and use that backlight to get in and get some side profile shots and then when I bring them out, if I'm doing parent shots, this is where I could still get some beautiful shots backlit with their little hands up here if you want to if they, they're responding and they're, you know, they, you need to 
quickly wrap them back up, you can just pull that wrap straight back up over to their little arms. And you can still get a beautiful backlit shot. So I would be standing over there and get a side profile of mum and dad. And then um, if they're nice and sleepy, you could unwrap them for the beautiful parent shots to get that variety. But it is entirely up to you. So, yeah. uh, Kelly Collins, quick question. Can she come back and watch this later? <laughs> All right, so this has been live on my Facebook page. I don't often do Facebook Lives right here. They're normally in my group. But today we thought we'd try something a little different and go live on the page. And what we're going to do is post this on my YouTube channel. So you can go to YouTube, you can look for Kelly Brown. So it's going to be shared there and it'll stay there um, along with lots of other videos that I've done previously as well. And if you are a member of my group, you can also find the videos there. There's a link to um, in the files section to a lot of the videos on YouTube. And then there's also under announcement and the videos tab, lots of videos there as well. But I think I'm kind of done. Like, obviously, there's a lot that we've covered here, but I think the most important takeaway for you is you have to do the communicating with your clients to know what it is that they want. You've got to come up with a session workflow that works for you and the baby that you have in the session. Every baby is different. You're going to have awake babies, you're going to have super sleepy babies, you're going to have unsettled babies, you're going to have slightly older babies, but it's having a workflow that is going to work for that baby so that you aren't wasting time throughout a session and your clients are sitting there at the back of the room or behind you going, um, does she know what she's doing? What is she doing now? You've got to communicate, talk to them and explain what it is that you are doing and make sure that it all reflects on the comfort and the safety of their baby and getting them in and out of the studio as quickly as possible. Uh, what is your group called? It is called Kelly Brown Newborn Posing. Thank you very much. Michelle's also just put a link there for perfect. creating the perfect environment. Yes. Um, the blog post. There is so much information on the blog, honestly. Whatever you could want to find in terms of lenses, lighting, props, um, wraps, there's so much content on there. Again, um, newborn behaviour, creating the perfect environment for your studio. Uh, go and check it out if you're after any information that's going to help your sessions flow a little bit more easier. But it is all about creating that session workflow. You've got to prepare, you've got to plan, you've got to communicate and then you will be able to deliver a full gallery of images that your clients will love and will buy every one. Because if you're just coming into your studio and you're doing whatever it is that you want and you're not talking to them, you are not servicing your client. It is all about creating an experience that you know they're going to love that's going to reflect on them referring more of their friends and family to you in the future or returning with future babies um, and obviously their opinion of you. And it's just like any other business that we go to. Uh, we need to provide that level of customer service that we would expect. So yeah, I'm going to go because it's been a great live. Um, nearly an hour. Just Sorry, like I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it's Monday here. Have a great week, everyone. I will see you again very soon for more lives.